Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and in this video, I wanted to go over that rubber banding we saw in the last authoritative movement uh, that I was discussing to sh show that the server is actually in control of the position, and it will pull the player back. Uh, so we've added a lot of controls in order for you to help you out, but two of the main ones. We have uh, position and rotation so that you can actually control the sync distance. So we're going to go back and take a review of what we saw last time. Uh, with uh, some of our new UI layout just so that uh, you can recognize it when you see it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to authoritative. I'm going to copy that name. Uh, I'm going to jump in here, select the forge cube guy. This is the cube that's going to spawn in there. Now notice we have inside of the server's authority, uh, we have it enabled and we enable the client side prediction. And the two new values that control this synchronization is uh, the authoritative sync distance and the authoritative sync rotation. So we're going to be messing with those in just a moment. And right now we're going to leave it at 0 0.25, which is a very small amount. Uh, the, cube, uh, the cube width alone is 0.5, so uh, we will see rubber banding in this one. So I'm going to go to Menu, and I'm going to go to the Canvas and set that to my scene name that's going to load. I'm going to do a network latency simulation of 500 milliseconds. I'll build this out and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm going to make the uh, editor my server and the instance my client. So I'm going to host server. Uh, I'm going to play. So we will see the network latency on spawn. That's how we'll know it was working. So there's the 500 millisecond delay. Now I'm going to press the input, and when I release, you're going to see that the server takes control, and I snap back, and that's that rubber banding we saw it last time. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix this by making a reasonable amount for the client-side prediction to uh, be able to simulate on its own. So uh, we'll check that out. We're going to start by going to the authoritative scene. I'm going to save the scene just so I don't have to change that again. Uh, we'll go to the forge cube guy, select this guy, and uh, we're going to go down and we're going to set this 0 0.25 to about 5 so that it's large enough for the cube and we won't see that rubber banding so it's going to have a sync distance of 5. I'm going to jump back to the menu scene and build this out. We'll see how it works. I still have the network latency at about 500 milliseconds. Yeah, okay. Okay, same shebang. I'm gonna have this as the server. And I have this as the client. We will see latency. Okay, and now when I move, you'll see that the pulling back isn't going to happen because I made it about five units. Of course, if I go beyond that five units, the server will correct it. So uh, that's how you can do client-side prediction and allow it to have a sync threshold from the server so that it's not automatically snapping back as soon as you release a key or stop getting input. So if you have any questions, please let me know. This is a follow-up video again to the previous video, which did have the rubber banding. It was dramatic so that we could show that the server was completely in control of that position. But now you can see that the server is still in control of the position, but the player or the client itself can correctly simulate it without seeing the rubber banding based on your thresholds. And of course, we give you all the source code, so it's easy for you to go in and see where we used uh, those variables and determine uh, if you want to be able to add more to it in order to enhance it to the behaviors of your system. So please let us know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.